Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm David Bird with Reality Reimagine and welcome to the Photoshop retouching series. This is an ongoing series that's going to explore the basic tools and techniques of retouching an image in Photoshop. Let's set some expectations of what your journey through this series will entail. First, this series is designed for all levels of experience in Photoshop. We'll take our time through the series to make sure that the beginner, intermediate, and advanced user of Photoshop will gain new knowledge in how to retouch an image in Photoshop. Secondly, we're going to be retouching various portraits of human beings. However, the tools and techniques that we explore are applicable to almost any genre of photography. We're going to begin the journey in the retouching series with the first stage of retouching, which is to retouch skin. Today's video, we're going to explore four tools that are commonly used to achieve this. The healing brush, the spot healing brush, the patch tool, and the clone stamp tool. Before we dive into Photoshop, I would like to ask for your help in growing this channel on YouTube. Liking this video and subscribing to the channel tells YouTube that there is great education to be found here. And when you subscribe to the channel, make sure to click the bell icon so you'll be notified when new videos are live on the channel. Your support means the absolute world to me, and I thank you for it. And with that, let's begin our journey and the adventure in retouching by diving into the Photoshops. This is the image that we're going to use to demonstrate these four different tools. Let's first talk about what the tools do in a simple sort of way. Their job is to copy information from one place within the image and try to move that information to somewhere else wherever you direct the tool. Each tool does it a little bit differently. And when you're working with skin, you're often going to use these tools to replace a blemish that's on the skin. So let's zoom into this image just a little bit and we can see that there is a blemish on the model's forehead that needs to be removed. Before we remove this blemish, we need to talk about how you use the tool to help the algorithm in Photoshop do a good job. Because again, the tool's job is to sample information from one place within the picture and move that information to the place where you direct it, which is in this case over the blemish to remove or to replace the blemish. To help the algorithm, we need to work in what I call a zone. And we need to work in a zone, in a zone like we're in the zone. No, a zone within the image itself because it's copying information and textures and so forth and trying to use that to replace the blemish. So let me demonstrate. A zone to me, if I was going to replace this blemish right here, the zone that I would work from is somewhere like this. I would want to stay in this area through here of her forehead and so forth. Why? Well, the texture is roughly the same. The colors are roughly the same, but most importantly, this information, this texture around the blemish is at the same focal length as the blemish. I would not want to copy information from somewhere like here at the bottom of her jaw because the texture is different, the colors are the same, the focal length is different, they just simply don't match. So the algorithm will do its job, but it will copy information from a place that doesn't match the surrounding area of the blemish itself. So to get started today, let's use the basic healing brush, which was the first brush that was included in Photoshop to kind of do this job. So to get to the healing brush, I'm going to hit the letter J, which is the hotkey for the healing brush, but it's going to activate the spot healing brush on the tools palette here. You can see in the bottom right hand corner, there's a small little triangle that indicates that there are other tools nestled beneath this one. So if I right click the tool, it'll bring up this window where other tools are accessible. They all have the hotkey of the letter J for the healing brush. So I'm gonna to come to the healing brush tool itself that activates the healing brush tool and now we can use it. So this tool needs you to designate an area that you want Photoshop to sample from to then copy over the blemish. So to do that, while we're on the healing brush tool, I'm going to hold Alt or Option, and then I'm going to tap once with my Wacom Intuos pen to my tablet. So holding Alt or Option, I sample, and now when I move the brush over the blemish, Photoshop is giving me sort of a live view of what that information looks like and how it might look when I copy it over the blemish. My brush is roughly the size of the blemish, and so I'm just simply going to tap my pen to the tablet and do just a little bit of a trace and then let go. And now the tool has sampled information and has copied it down and covered the blemish. 
Let's take a zoomed out look to kind of assess it from there. So I'm gonna hit Control or Command and the number zero to zoom all the way back out. Now, when I look at this from this distance, I can see, well, there's a little bit of a color variation there in the skin tones. I can see something that looks a little bit brighter of a skin tone, something that looks a little bit darker. So I'm gonna start zooming in just a little bit to kind of see. But as I zoom in, I, I mean, I'm really not noticing too much of a difference here. I mean, yes, there's a little bit of skin that's a little bit brighter, so this is an example of something that I like to call editing bias or Photoshop bias or retouching bias. My eyes are used to seeing this picture with the blemish. And I know I've done something to this picture. I've altered it. So I'm going to sit there and I'm going to judge the pixels and be like, ah, no, there's like three or four pixels right there that are just a little too bright. No, 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 no. But anybody else that would look at this image and did not know what we did, they wouldn't see it because their eyes are not biased to it. Subsequently, this is why I never let any of my clients watch me when I retouch, because if they see what was changed, they'll forever see that image and go, oh yeah, he did this to the picture, he did that, he changed that, and he changed this. They'll know the magic behind the curtain, so to speak. So let's look at the other tools and see how they function in trying to replace this blemish in this area of skin. So to go a step back in my history, I'm gonna hit Control or Command and the letter Z. And that will take me back to where the blemish was before we use the healing brush tool. Let's use the spot healing brush tool now. And to go to the spot healing brush, I'm going to hit the letter J to activate the tool. And then I'm going to come over to the icon and right click it and then come to spot healing brush and click that one. The spot healing brush uses a thing called content aware. It's Adobe's algorithm. I believe it's called Adobe Sensei. And its information, its, its algorithm, its Skynet, tries to sample the area and make up something new over the blemish. But in this case, the spot healing brush doesn't require you to hit alter option and sample an area as a source. It just simply looks at the information around wherever you direct the brush and utilizes that to cover up the blemish. So let's zoom in just a little bit. I'm going to hit J to be on the spot healing brush. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my pen and touch my Wacom tablet and it's going to make that circle. And then if I start directing it around a little bit, that little circle gets bigger. This is Photoshop's way of telling me all of the area of skin underneath that circle, that's going to be altered or changed. Content Aware is going to look at the information around it and use that information to make up new skin wherever we see that dark circle. When I let go of my pen to the tablet, it utilizes the algorithm, makes up all that new information. Let's take a look at it, zoomed all the way out. So we're gonna hit Control or Command on the number zero and zoom all the way out. Again, I can see just a little bit of a shift of colors that designates that there used to be a highlight and a shadow of something there, but as I start to zoom in, does it see that noticeable? I don't know, somebody walks in, they look at it and they go, oh, that looks great, looks, skin looks fine. I don't know what you're talking about, blemish, blemish, right. So, I'm biased still, but I do think the spot healing brush did just a little bit of a better job than the healing brush itself. Truth be told, in my experience with Photoshop, which I've been using Photoshop since like 2002, content aware is a more powerful process than the original healing brush. But there is a time and place for the healing brush and it just depends per image as you're working. Let's look at the patch tool though to keep going down this tutorial. So I'm gonna hit Controller Command and Z to go one step back in my history and hit J to be on the healing brush, come over to the icon, right click, come down to patch tool. I'm gonna to zoom in just a little bit more. The patch tool is very much like the healing brush, it's just in reverse. What the patch tool requires you to do is to make a selection around the blemish that you want to remove and then move that selection somewhere else within the image that you want Photoshop to source from. So I'm gonna make a circle around the blemish, and then Photoshop is going to make a selection, and that's this little uh, marching ants is what they're called, and this is the selection. So inside of the selection, this is the area that's going to be replaced. Now I have to click and hold and move this new selection around, and Photoshop gives me a live view of what's going to potentially happen when I let go of my pen from the tablet or if you were to let go of your mouse button. So this time I wanna help the algorithm out just a little bit more. I want to stay within the zone, which is this you know, forehead area, but more importantly, I want to get a little bit closer to the blemish. Why? Because if we look at the image, we can see through this area, the skin tone is a little bit brighter at the top, a little bit darker at the bottom. That's the same area of the blemish. 
So I'm hoping that the algorithm will pick up on that when it samples all that information and move it over. So I'm gonna to come to an area that's pretty close to the blemish and I'm going to let go of my pen to the tablet and it filled in this area of selection with new information trying to cover up the blemish. The selection marching ants are still there, so to get rid of that, I just have to hit Control or Command and the letter D for deselect. When I do, the selection is gone. Let's do our test. Control or Command and the number zero to zoom all the way back out. The patch tool did a better job, but I think it's because I stayed close to the blemish and I used that area paying attention to the color, where the color was a little bit brighter on the top, a little bit darker on the bottom. This is vital. When you use these tools, the algorithm is very powerful, regardless of which tool that you use, but you have to help it out. You have to problem solve, and that's staying in the same zone, but really paying attention to what you're trying to do. Look at the surrounding colors, look at the surrounding texture, and then try to help the algorithm by selecting something that's nearby. So I'm gonna hit Control or Command on the letter Z to go one step back in the history, which that should have Replace the blemish, no it didn't, one more time. There's the blemish, and then I'm gonna hit Control or Command and D to deselect. Now we're gonna to go to the final tool, which is the clone stamp tool. And spoilers, I left this tool last because this tool is not a good tool to use if you're doing a direct retouch to an image like this. The clone stamp tool, its job is to do an exact copy of wherever you select as the source. It's not going to use content aware or any kind of algorithm to make up something new and try to match it to the skin tones and the light and the textures. It's literally doing an exact copy. So I'm gonna hit S for the clone stamp tool. I'm gonna to zoom in just a little bit. The clone stamp tool is pretty much like the healing brush. You need to sample a source area that you want to move over. But again, instead of unlike the healing brush, the clone stamp tool is just going to move an exact copy over. So I'm gonna hit S for the clone stamp tool. I'm gonna hit Alter Option and sample an area that is nearby and tap the screen once. Now Photoshop knows that's the area that I wanna source from. And when I start painting over the blemish, it does an exact copy. So if I were to go all the way out, Control or Command on the number zero, it almost looks like a new blemish because it's copying over a different darker color into the scene. Now, there's different things we could do with the clone stamp tool, potentially lowering the opacity or the flow of the brush to try to soften the effect of it so we can make that up just a little bit more. And truth be told, I do use the clone stamp tool in that regard. Let me go one step back and we'll demonstrate that. I'm gonna zoom in, hit Control or Command and the letter Z to go one step back in the history. We'll zoom in just a little bit more, hit S for the clone stamp tool. I'm gonna hit Alter Option and sample an area that is nearby but this time I'm going to change the flow of the brush. The opacity and the flow of the brush are set to 100%. That means that the tool is at 100% full effect to the image. If I change the flow to let's say 10%, then it's only going to copy over just a little bit every single time I make contact with my pen to the tablet. So to change the flow, I can click this little triangle and start sliding this and try to get down to 10%, but it's a little difficult sometimes to land on the exact number that you want. So there's a faster, easier way to do it. I'm going to hit shift and the number one on my keyboard and it changes it to 10%. If I wanted to go to a flow of 50%, I would hit shift and the number five or shift and the number zero will return it to 100%. Subsequently, if I wanted to change the opacity that way, all I have to do is just hit the number. I don't have to hit shift first. So I'm gonna take my flow to 10% by hitting shift and the number one. Now, let's start copying over the blemish. Again, it's only gonna copy at a flow of 10%. So just a little bit of a touch, and it's a little softer, but again, it's doing an exact copy. So the colors just don't match. And this is again, I kind of set the clone stamp tool up to fail a little bit in this video, but that's okay. Because the clone stamp tool, again, is a very powerful tool. Doing direct copies of things are utilized across the board for retouching. But when it comes to skin retouching, the clone stamp tool is the premier tool to be used in my favorite technique for retouching for skin. It's called frequency separation. And it's the technique that we're going to explore in the next video in this series. But before we do that, let's do a little bit of a recap of what we've explored today in this video. So we've explored four of these basic tools that are used in retouching. And not just solely for skin retouching, they're used all the time in various functions of retouching. 
You can use the spot healing brush to remove stray strands of hair. You can use the patch tool to remove uh, or to sample greater sections of skin. And the healing brush tool is utilized sometimes, whether it's skin retouching or just retouching a background colors. It just depends on the needs of the image. And the best way to know how those tools will work and the various needs of images is to practice with them, experiment with them, work with them at different opacities and flows, work with the different tools, not just in doing skin retouching, but try to clone out some hair or use the healing brush to move hair from one place to another. Use the patch tool to potentially move part of the clothing on a person from one section to another and see how the tool works. See how the algorithm is utilized to make up new information. The clone stamp tool, like I said, is the premier tool we're going to use in frequency separation. And frequency separation is certainly used for skin retouching, but it goes way beyond that. And it is simply one of my favorite techniques inside of Photoshop because it gives me true artistic control in so many ways when I work with an image. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure that you like the video to tell YouTube that there's great content here and subscribe to this channel so you will be informed when that new video for frequency separation is live on this channel. Thank you for your support and until next time, I'll see you out there in the world of Photoshop.